to another gathering of the Gold Key Adventurers Society. Have a seat by the fire as we prepare to help you unlock the secrets of the travel life. From theme park thrills to Purple Mountain's majesty, we want to see it all and do it all, and we want to help you do the same. We all have those bucket list trips, once in a lifetime destinations that we'll get to someday. We're here to help you make your travel dreams a reality. Buy the ticket, take the trip. Where do you want to go? Come on, come on, come on, now tell me what's on your bucket list. Okay, hey, okay, hey. It's a beautiful day. Okay, hey, okay, hey. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day to argue over who gets to do what as we imagine our perfect Disney World day. But first, travel news, including the return of park hopping and the 737 Max, Epcot updates, Japan loves KFC for Christmas, Heather takes us to a meat dungeon, and praying for breasts in Japan. Put on your game face and show me the money! It's time to hit the trail with the Gold Key Adventure Society! What could be a better way to raise your spirits and refresh your soul than one perfect day at Walt Disney World? The day where the planets align and you get to experience every single one of your favorite attractions, foods, and shows with no muscle or fuss. Just an easy day of exploring the parks. For a day like that, you need the help of an expert travel planner from Key to the World Travel. Our perfect Disney day, on the other hand, is going to be a little bit more cutthroat as we duke it out to draft our best day over at the parks. But first, I was wondering, uh, the radio in our van is officially locked on Christmas music until December 26th. What Christmas song... Mm. Yeah, I know. What Christmas song makes you reach for the dial to switch the station whenever it comes on? Christmas Oh, that... <laughs> I love that one. What? <laughs> That's the worst song. Christmas ever. shoes. Christmas shoes. It's the audio equivalent of a B movie. That is just uh, it's yeah. Pure, uh, it's like a home a Hallmark a movie. It's a wow. it's sung. Uh, it's a, I can't remember the guy's name, but he he has that. Butterfly Kisses song too. Oh <laughs> no! He's, he's thinking about the little boy that wants to buy his mom up. Yeah, mama's dying, and he wants to get her dies. these red shoes for Christmas before the Lord takes her away. <laughs> it is so sad. Oh so, no! It's that just gloppy, sounds... but it's just Yuck. the most. Yeah. It's like a Hallmark movie. Well, yeah, choice is uh, no song in history has ruined the goodwill. That was created by a career of pioneering and rock and roll like Paul McCartney's simply having a wonderful Christmas time. Oh, <laughs> that yeah. song ruins everything the Beatles it's ever did. Terrible. Like, yeah. it was, I don't just. mind that song because it's just stupid. But Wyatt and I have a it joke is. that he literally realized on the way to the recording studio that he forgot to write it. Yeah. So he's just like, it's, oh crap. He just came up with something in the car. He's just it's observing like, things. Choirs of children sing this song. And then there's not even a choir of children. It just goes ding, like, no. ding, uh, ding. They practiced all year long. I don't know. Like, <laughs> they practiced all year. The best they could come up with is uh, ding, dong, ding. That. <laughs> I was going to say the very rapey Baby It's Cold Outside. Yeah. <laughs> that song. Oh, I love that song. And not because I mean, of the rape. Yeah, it's, it's uh, musically, it's a great song, but then you listen to it. <laughs> it's a very no means no Christmas. So. Yeah. Well, you can listen to the new uh, John Legend version. What? Did he change the words? Yeah, what? it's all like, it's like baby, it's get like, out. I respect your feelings. You go ahead and maybe sign this contract. Um, she, she's like, maybe I'll have one more cigarette. And he's like, maybe we should examine your personal habits and health choices. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's all about how he totally respects her and wants to. No, okay, you know, I'm just gonna stick to the. The original. <laughs> <laughs> like, how could it Don't be worse? Think. Oh, there you go. That's it. <laughs> I've got two that drive me nuts, and one of them is going to be an unpopular opinion. I think I can't stand Mariah Carey caterwauling about all I want is Christmas. Uh, Christmas no, is no, I yeah. agree with you. I can't stand I, her song. singing anything. Yuck. <laughs> and there's and there's that new there's that new song from Ariana Grande where she's like, it's Ariola. Uh, is he going <laughs> to? Santa, is he going to stick around? Because I want to know if I should if I should let him have sex with me. Because if he's not going to be around next Christmas, then I'm not. What? What? I mean, Ooh, Santa's got the it, COVID. Should I ride his pole? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it's from last year, so it's pre-COVID. Uh, there's a line that she says. Uh, he, Santa, tell me is he, are you, is he really here? Because I can't give it all away if he won't be here next year. Oh, oh no. Oh. <sighs> Yeah. Wow. 
I mean, at least she's got the sense of giving this season. It's <laughs> usually about gimme, 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 but you know. Oh, but she didn't. She didn't want to give him a nice gift if he's just going to return it later. I mean, after you date Pete Davidson, I guess it's all downhill from there. <laughs> Is there a below Pete Davidson? <laughs> yeah. I guess he's rich. At least. Yeah, it could be worse, I suppose. It could be. Polly Shore. <laughs> well, our show this week is brought to you by Key to the World Travel. Remember Polly Shore? He's in the juice, man. <laughs> <laughs> Our show this week is brought to you by Key to the World Travel. Key to the World Travel is a full-service travel agency specializing in theme parks, cruising, and destinations around the world. Head to www.keytotheworldtravel.com for more details and a no-obligation quote on the vacation of a lifetime. Jess, exciting news about uh, park park hopping. Yes, park hopping is returning to Walt Disney World, finally. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Starting January 1st, 2021, guests who purchased a ticket or annual pass with the Park Hopper benefits will be able to visit more than one park per day. Mm-hmm. Um, but not is, without some some guidelines. Some <laughs> yeah, there are new <laughs> modifications. So uh, you must make your Disney Park Pass reservation for the first park you plan to visit and mm-hmm. enter that park. Yes, prior you must to, visit it. Prior to visiting another one. And then um, the way it is right now, you won't need a park reservation for the next park um but it will start at 2 p.m and that will be subject to change yeah so they're instituting out. park hopping hours yeah so it's mm. two to close for whatever you know the park schedule mm-hmm. time is so and it's still uh c- park capacity requirements are still going to be in place for the other park so they haven't been very specific on this have they we yeah, assume no, you're going to yeah. be able to check my disney experience I, to I, see. I figured you'd have to yeah. because I was just saying that to my wife that, you know, like they're they don't want to feel the complaints of somebody who just thought they could hop on over mm-hmm. to Hollywood Studios and find out then that it's full. Yeah, I Hollywood wish they Studios would make it where closed. you go on and hit a I'm about to go to this park and it either gives mm-hmm. you a, You'd think they that way they know who's coming and you know that you can get in when you get there. Yeah, and like there's some like restrictions. Like a secondary reservation, like fast pass. Yeah, parks. yeah. There's yeah. some restrictions related to Hollywood Studios as well. So yeah, so like you... That. You will only be able to make a Rise of the Resistance um, boarding pass if the Hollywood Studios park pass is your first of the day mm-hmm. reservation. So if you're going to hop over to Hollywood Studios after being at Magic Kingdom, you're not going to be able to even try to get a pass. So. Yep. Now the hopping's back. Get ready to never be able to get a, a, a pass, a park pass for that park because it everyone does, will yeah. make one for that park mm-hmm. in the morning. And then yep. to think, well, if I didn't get my thing, I'll just go somewhere else that afternoon. Yeah. Yep. So it's, it's gonna yeah, gonna it's gonna be, be interesting. I, I have a feeling that they've got more rigorous standards in place for how that's gonna happen if it gets yeah. a little out of hand. But yeah. yeah, I just got back um the other day from from being there and you know, it's still it's it's ticked up a bit, but it's still, you know, for certain parks we were done with everything we wanted to do before three PM. So mm-hmm. we would have totally used this probably yeah. every day that we were people are yeah. freaking out like it's so crowded there. But like, did y'all it's forget? It's just like, not. It, no, don't. <laughs> no, y'all no, have forgotten what crowded at Walt Disney World really looks like. Yeah, exactly, it's not yeah. this. There's no way in the world you would have done eight or nine rides by Mm-mm, three p.m. No. I mean, I feel a lot of what, what contributes to that is, you know, everything's running at lower capacity. So many, mm-hmm. you know, a few rides yeah. are still closed per park. So in itself, you know, they've got lower staff. That makes it somewhat feel because probably more of the public areas um have mm-hmm. more people than and those lines but there's still so much out. distancing yeah. and the lines mm-hmm. are but super fast we jumped into lines yeah. that looked like they would take a day and and yeah. we never <laughs> yeah. waited longer than 30 minutes so. yeah, it's 30 35 minutes for most things most mm-hmm. of and some but, of the crowded lookingness that's yeah. not a word, but is <laughs> because of, yeah, exactly. <laughs> is because of how far those lines have to stretch out for the social distancing. There yeah. normally wouldn't be people standing where some people are standing. You know, you don't yeah, have like we got the major crowd eaters like shows. So yeah. you don't have yeah. twelve hundred people at a time taken off the street to go sit and watch Beauty and the Beast or whatever. Right? Yeah, we got mm-hmm. in line for It's a Small World, and it it started. They basically wound it back around the Rapunzel bathrooms. And I was like, oh, mm-hmm. weird. I've never seen anything like this over here. But we literally yeah. went through it. You and just never keep stopped. walking. Yeah. yeah. So I saw also that in, in some also good news that they're opening more restaurants. Yeah. Finally. 
Um, and we were just, I think we just talked about this on the last episode. We were talking about how they need to get the restaurants, more restaurants opened. And uh, one of them is Crystal Palace. Yeah. Uh, no, no characters for right now, but they're reopening it as, as we have been saying they should family, family style, style. Yeah. Mm-hmm. and magic kingdom definitely needs. It really right needs now. it. And the, the other good news was Tomorrowland Terrace because magic kingdom needs more quick service and Tomorrowland yeah. Terrace is also going to be opening, and I outdoors. believe next month. Mm-hmm. And then and he, I, that a lot of people. Oh yeah. Even with so. Physical and Crystal distance. Crystal Palace is huge too. Yeah. There's so much seating in there. We noticed um, when I was there with Dan's wife a couple weeks ago or last week. <laughs> when was that? Three days. <laughs> Recently, ago. Uh, we had yeah. noticed the day that, just that got it. There. Yeah, <laughs> it looked like they were. Um, they, the, the, all the lights were on in Crystal Palace, and there was a lot of stuff going on in there. And it looked like what they were doing was uh, adjusting the tables. For social distancing. So we were suspecting that maybe that one was coming back online soon. And it it, it is. Uh, Andy's Toy Box uh, quick service is opening. Woody's Lunchbox. That's what it is. (laughs) Something. I never know what that one is called. (laughs) And I was just saying that 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 is highly needed because we were looking for a snack on that side of the park. And yeah, when we were there, Ronto Roasters wasn't even open, so mm-hmm. it was hard to find something just sort of quick at that point. So it's time for the return of the tachos. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. pop tarts. Yes, I think the food is great at the uh, Andy's Lunchbox mm-hmm. or it's yummy. Woody's Roundup or it's Woody's whatever. Flows V8 Cafe, the Lunchbox. Toy Story <laughs> restaurant <laughs> in but Toy Story Land. It's like sitting in the parking lot of a Walmart to eat. It's so hot and <laughs> it impressive, is. and they have like yeah. somehow. All these umbrellas, but zero shade. I'm not sure how they've accomplished that. But oh, but those, those, those fake pop tarts—not fake, but homemade pop tarts—are delicious, yeah. and the mm-hmm. the tachos are superb. But that's it's good. It's they're they're realizing that they need to get more more restaurants open, more food service happening, and maybe as the restaurants start coming back online, we'll see the return of the dining plan soon. Fingers crossed. That would be nice. Wouldn't be surprised. Uh, something else is coming back, Heather, uh, in the airline business. Yes, the 737 MAX has finally been recertified by the FAA. They, they cleared them this week to resume the flying of the 737 MAX. It's been 20 months that the that the f- entire fleet twenty months was grounded. A crash. Yeah, right. <laughs> Oof. It's probably going to take a few more months before they're able to get them back into the air. But this is going to be really, really good for Southwest. Um, I believe American, American had a lot had of a ma- max. Yeah, and f- Southwest has been. Uh, it's been bad for them. They've had to cancel so many flights and, and re- reorganize their schedule because they had so many of them. So it's been the, the problems have all been fixed and the training has been fixed and they'll be able to get them back into the air and flying soon. So that's Is good. That and that's it's Warp as we just hurry that right along. I, <laughs> Yeah, let's go. 20 months is not really hurrying that along. <laughs> I'm going to let a few of those fly before I get on. I think a lot of people are thinking that. I I think I read that the first ones that are going to be back in service will be American Airlines flights out of Miami. That that will start using that. But well, good. it's good. No yeah, I could ever be on one of those. Flights. No, not for a while. And, you know, it, it'll the, it'll slowly the, the the demand is not up yet, so they'll be able to slowly phase them back in. Yeah, it'll be um, and to be fair, the U.S. airlines, yeah, yeah. To be fair, the U.S. airlines didn't have problems with the Max because they were doing the training and the and getting their pilots certified. It was it, it was smaller airlines around the world that were cutting the corners and not doing the training on it. That was the issue. Um, but now that that won't be a problem anywhere because they've fixed 
I don't really understand exactly. It's been explained to me in detail what was wrong with with the Max. Yeah. I'm sure sure Dave loved that. I didn't quite (laughs) grasp it, but yeah, it's all good now. Um, Maybe you could ask someone to clarify it even. No, that's okay. I'll be, I'm I'm good. I could get him on the line. You want to bring this? That's okay. That's okay. Special guest. Uh, The other thing we heard this week is that Delta has decided that they're going to continue the blocking of middle seats through the yes. spring, which is great. Uh, I think that's that's a good move for them. They're the only airline now that's still doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, and through the spring gets us into when we should have widely available vaccines. So good move on Delta's part. I think that'll be some good PR for them. And hopefully by then, by the time they open those middle seats back up, it'll we'll, we'll have seen a a resumption of a lot of travel and yeah. things maybe getting a little back to normal. Yeah, at the very least, fingers crossed. So hopefully yes. people feel a little more comf- comfortable with the idea of... Exactly, yeah. Given what numbers are doing right now. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, I feel perfectly safe flying with with the way that they're enforcing the the wearing of masks and stuff. I mean, they're they're just as serious on Delta as they are, and other airlines. I, I can only speak to Delta. That's who I fly, but they're just as serious about it as, as Disney world is. I've seen many gate agents telling people who are, you know, it's slipping down a little, Hey, get that back up over your nose before you get on that plane. And the flight attendants pay attention to it for the most part too. So. Well guys today, well, not, not as you're listening, but today as we're recording is a pretty big day uh, in Hong Kong. (laughs) Today, they're kicking off the the 15th anniversary celebration of Hong Kong Disneyland, and they're finally unveiling uh, the Castle of Magical Dreams. We've talked about this before. The Franken Castle. The Castle of many, many themes. Yes, the giant monstrosity of uh, of a castle there. I love it. Their original castle was uh, a direct copy of... uh, Disneyland's Mm -hmm. uh, Sleeping Beauty Castle, and they decided they needed to make something a little bit taller, more spectacular. Yeah. So this uh, this castle uh, includes uh, towers and depictions of 13 Disney princesses and queens with different towers and spires. And and you see, there's a there's one with Mushu on the on the top of the dome for uh, Mulan and symbols and mosaics. And there's some. Pretty awesome stained glass windows, it looks like. Yeah, I think it's really cool looking. It's, it is sort of a Franken castle, a hodgepodge of different architectural styles and fantasy elements, but it's pretty cool. It's interesting, though, because it, it's in the same basic footprint as the little castle they had. They just went way up. It just went straight up in the air, yeah, like a yeah, skyscraper. It's, like, it's kind of like they put a very unwieldy hat on top of <laughs> on top of Sleeping Beauty Castle, um, and they also have uh, inside uh, Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique there. So, oh, is that new? Did they not have that before? I think I th- probably was no new. room when it was the same size as the tiny Sleeping Beauty Castle. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh, you want to go to Hong Kong? I do want to go. I to would there. like to do that, but I think it's my least of all the foreign parks. It's the one I'm least excited. I want to do Tokyo. Yeah, from what I understand, they you know they they need more at Hong Kong. It's it's still kind of just Disneyland park size, and they don't have mm-hmm. as but they don't have as many rides as Disneyland in California. So it's kind of it. From what I understand, it feels a lot like. California, but there's like weird, like you'll see a snack cart selling squid or something weird like that squid that lets you know stick. you're not in California. Yeah, and don't they have a lot of just kind of like walk through exhibit kind of? They do. Things? There's not as it's not as many true rides is that as one of the other ones parks. That's owned is that owned by the government? That one or is that Oriental Land Company or something? I think it's I think it's a little bit more than fifty percent owned by Disney. But a big chunk of it is, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tokyo is wholly owned by wholly owned by their government, their, yeah, least. and they're that's licensing the name. They spend some. That's crazy cool looking in Tokyo. Mm-hmm. I want to go there. Absolutely, and they're do they're adding more cool stuff on. Next time I'm as in the Tokyo speak. area, I'll pop in. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, someplace else that's adding more cool stuff is Epcot and just has some announcements from there for us. Yeah. So it's, it's funny. I literally just said last week when I was on Spaceship Earth that it's too damn dark in here. Um, <laughs> I just said it out loud. I was like, too damn dark in here. I can't even tell they that's were, a were they, what Were is they this? listening? Was Apparently there, was so, there, uh-huh. because uh, we got an announcement that Spaceship Earth is set to receive new and enhanced lighting, not only inside the attraction, but a new lighting package for the exterior as well, which... I'm very excited about because I love it whenever they mm-hmm. mess with the light oh, yeah. on Spaceship Earth. So. The exterior yeah. stuff they were talking about in that video is going to be really cool. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, the the inside's getting enhanced. I'm assuming it's going to be along the lines of what they were planning to do originally as part of the big reefer, but obviously not. But as, just the lighting package. Yeah, they've, just the lighting. I don't know because the, the original concept in ground effects. The concept yeah. art for that, if you guys remember, showed like a sort of like a Tinkerbell sparkle light that was supposed to mm-hmm. lead you along the way. So I'm curious if they throw that in or how they're going to make that work. But um, if anything, it'll be great because. A lot of that ride really needs some some brightening up. I know it's supposed to be a dark ride, but that's kind of pushing the the term, if you ask me. Mm. Um, it's a too dark lighting ride. Lighting is just they've gone crazy with what they can do with lighting these yeah. days and using projections to do fire. And yeah, so cool I'm excited. Stuff. I think it's going to look really cool. Um, along with that, they also announced that the harmonious badge barges, excuse me, that they've been working on for the new nighttime light show. <laughs> we don't um, need no we don't need barges. harmonious badges. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they'll be um, pushing those out into World Showcase Lagoon during the day, and those things will be turned into giant fountains. Um, Ooh, cool. On display, and and I don't know if Heather, you saw when you were down there, but that there's that giant sort of semicircular one mm-hmm. that you can see from the skyline or like over yeah. the trees. It is massive. I didn't it's know they huge. were, were going to go that big with it, but that's going to be one of the ones out in the water from the concept yeah. art. I think it's six stories tall. So yeah, it's ooh. crazy. So well, it's, it, a, it, it has that lagoon is it. huge. So yeah. it, you'd need something substantial. Otherwise, it's just going to look like a tiny little Oh, look at the cute little fountain out in the middle. Yeah, you couldn't you couldn't have like world of color out there. That's true. Things. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, we don't have any start dates for any of that, but uh, Imagineer Zach Ridley did say that the barge fountains would be testing very soon. So mm, cool. Hopefully soon. Hopefully before and we January. Got some, we got some we com- got some confirmation that Ratatouille, Ratatouille is not opening this right. year. It will be sometime opening next in 2021, year. Twenty twenty one. So I wouldn't open it this year if I was them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's How probably would you not a bad that? idea. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You, but yeah. they are like they are literally putting like the finishing painted touches on that expansion of the France Pavilion. So I would I would like them to go <laughs> ahead and open that up. They don't have to open the ride and just but, not open the ride. Yeah, yeah, give more space to Epcot. Why not? I mean, you're going to need. Yeah, because so. there's that there's that crepe restaurant opening. Mm. I bet you see that open. Open yeah, that up for us. And a couple of shops and some kind of little other food stall or something that are going to be back there. Yeah, it so. looks so cool. And they also they also mentioned Space Two Twenty in the. Sp- well, yeah, thing, right. This, that's getting pushed to next year that's too. Been, yeah. That will have been more than a year. They pushed that off. It was yes. to be February of this mm-hmm. year. Yeah. Oof. So there's a sign for it up now. But that's it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, is they, there? Did you yeah. guys see the Imagineers on some site somewhere? It was outdoor, but they were testing the ride vehicles and showing how that looks for Guardians. Of Guardians? Of yeah. yeah. It looks so cool. It doesn't just spin like that stupid little roller coaster in Animal Kingdom, but it's it points you where it wants you to. So as you're going through a wicked coaster, it points you where the screens are going to mm-hmm. be with yeah. Groot and the gang. Oh, that's gonna it be reminds so cool. me a bit of um, Crush's coaster at Disneyland Paris yes. in that it can spin all the way around on yeah, the wall on the track. It's like an Omni movie. Ro- oh, yeah. Omni mover roller coaster. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Do they call it an Omni coaster? Ooh, I hope so. <laughs> the weird thing about that video was because of the perspective on where the camera was mounted, the yeah. background looked fake. It looked like it was CGI'd in. I was like, where are you? <laughs> yeah, it was like a GoPro had... mounted static yeah. pointing on the towards the guys riding it. And so the camera stayed with yeah. the vehicle. So it just looked like the background movie, but it made it look really, really fun. <laughs> That's going to be exciting. It's going to be cool. And it's super smooth. Doesn't look herky jerky at all. I think Jess will be able to do that one. Yeah, the fact that it has a lap bar and not any shoulder restraints. That's usually yeah, and I was happy indicator to see for me. That because I'm a big fat ass and I can't ride a lot of those things. Yeah. That's yeah. good. 
It looks good. I can't wait. Well, you'll have to. I, I can't wait for the fact that the vaccines are so close. We talked a little bit about last week about both Moderna and Pfizer uh, reporting their their initial findings from their phase three trial and that it's 95 percent effective. And then on Friday, November the 20th, they both went to seek emergency youth emergency use authorization. There we go. Youth EUA. authorization isn't good. It's yeah. just a bunch of kids in a room. No. Emergency <laughs> use authorization. Yeah. So it's expected that in the next week or two, that should they should get that authorization and start shipping it out, which and is it fantastic. Will ship, start shipping and arriving places twenty four mm-hmm. hours after they get. Mm-hmm. Which is fantastic. So That's we can awesome. start getting frontline healthcare workers and the most vulnerable vaccinated, which I mean, that in itself is going to be a, a really key turning point in this, yeah. because when we get the people who are most most vulnerable to getting very sick, if we can get them vaccinated, we can see a clear path to being out of this. And then they say that it probably will be, uh, it's looking like March uh, before just anybody will be able to go get it. Hopefully this, this, with these two clearing their phase three trial, hopefully some of the others, there's what, 15 others that are also in phase three and um, if some of those can start clearing their trials, too, that's even more availability. So great news. The travel industry has been really, you know, and everyone else. But we have really needed this. And um, I'm really excited about the, the, the spring being a much more positive You're thing. You're not concerned about Bill Gates injecting I'm uh, sure not. ID chip into you. I'm, I'm sure not. To, I, I want him to give me 5G. I hear it's like the <laughs> thing. <laughs> yes. I got 5G power. <laughs> <laughs> right, <yeah. laughs> Heck no. I will be uh, first in line when they say that uh, I'm eligible to, to get vaccinated. I will be there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure. I think we fall into the category of last to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're doing yeah. healthline yeah. workers, then the vulnerable, then the elderly, then children who really aren't getting sick <laughs> yeah. from this thing. And then nor- like people that aren't high risk and uh, <laughs> under age 60, age like age 20 to 60 goes last. Like what? Mm. If they're if they're doing children that high on the list just to get them back in school, I uh, I'm fine with that. Oh I yeah, my place absolutely. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Vaccinate all those <laughs> college kids that are spreading it around the country. Want them to vaccinate the kinds of people that spend money on travel. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Free vaccine with a package booking. <laughs> well, and honestly, if it gets out, if it gets out to the people who are are vulnerable to to getting really sick from it, then you know the rest of us can start. We're going to still have to wear masks for a while until I, I think probably the first half of 2021 is my guess yeah. until it's widely enough available that, you know, we can stop. But if you can get, if you, who is it? The, there's one of the governors. I think, I think it's my friend from Colorado said that her governor keeps saying, you know, don't kill grandma. Well, <laughs> if we can, if we can vaccinate grandma in January, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Let's yeah. do that. Yeah. <laughs> Poor grandma. Let's do that and then get on a 737 Max and go somewhere. Who's with me? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> One place you could go is you could head over to Japan. I would like I to go to Japan. I want to share with you guys my next installment in International Christmas Oddities. Yay. Uh, I kind of mentioned this last week. KFC is the go-to holiday meal in Japan. This is I was I was so listening to you guys to last week and yelling at my my phone. I was like, I knew this. Like why am <laughs> I not there to talk about this? <laughs> well, and we'll tell, that's we'll what we were why. wondering. Yeah, it's, it's, Jess. It's real weird. Uh, Mr. Vacation. <laughs> so every year, uh millions of people across Japan Weeks before the weeks before Christmas, they all have to get their reservation in with their local Kentucky Fried what? Chicken for their <laughs> for their party barrel uh, for Christmas Day. Is it a bucket? Oh, it's it's a it's a bucket and then some. It's a giant bucket. Um, wow! Like they also have very nice plates that you can get with it. But uh, so huh. last year's last year's Christmas holiday. 
party barrel uh, included um, included chicken, of course. Uh, huh. Also coleslaw, shrimp gratin, triple what? berry tiramisu what? cake, I'm- and uh, the the. Um, the, the fried chicken. This is fascinating to me. I would not think that the Japanese people would would want fried chicken. They well, really love that? Christmas as like an oddity, and they love sort of Colonel Sanders and fried chicken. And they love putting Colonel Sanders in Santa suits. Like that's a what face. really that's a big imagery yeah, thing for all them. All the in chains have a big. Uh, this is fascinating. And, and here's where it came from. And the interesting thing is, it all started as a lie from the first franchise <laughs> owner of a KFC in Japan back in the seventies. Um, he. Uh, KFC actually wasn't kicking off so so well. <laughs> Shocking. Japan, and uh, the owner of the first stores was hired hired by an elementary school to show up in a Santa suit. Um, <laughs> and he made up a song about Christmas and, and Kentucky Fried Chicken. Uh, he, and he... <laughs> So he made the Japanese think that it's well, our I tradition. I started dancing, holding the barrel of chicken. Kentucky Christmas, Kentucky Christmas, happy, happy, dancing around the schoolroom. <laughs> um, and, and multiple schools started oh, hiring wow, them. Oh, wow, look at that. Appeared- he appeared on a news. Uh, he, they, he was interviewed on uh, by a news station, and they asked him, "So, so do the in the United States is it common to eat Kentucky Fried Chicken on Christmas Day?" To which he obviously replied. Yeah, everyone. Yes, <laughs> yes, it is. They all do. <laughs> um, and it took. Oh, off. weird. Japan That's amazing. Japan loves Christmas, but they don't have the history of traditions, mm-hmm. you know, and they don't necessarily. I'm, I'm guessing that they're not big consumers of turkey, um, the way we are. So, uh, <gasps> and a little known so, fact: yeah. their Krampus is Long John Silver. <laughs> <laughs> It's everyone's It's favorite. fascinating to me how popular KFC is everywhere else in the world. Everywhere but here. <laughs> it's actually good everywhere else in the world. I've heard that like, oh, interesting. KFC is really good. Um, apparently... But the say, British have no taste and don't detect seasoning in the food. <laughs> uh, that's true. Um, apparently, Kentucky Fried Chicken earns one-third of its annual income for... Uh, Christmas sales in Japan. Wow. One third. Wow. Yep. <laughs> that's amazing. So that's, that's what we do in, uh, that's what also, we do I love Japan. Japanese Colonel Sanders. Yes, Santa. me too. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, he's great. <laughs> I want to cosplay that. <laughs> well, and then do you see this picture of him uh, on the sign holding a chicken? <laughs> There's like an illustrated sign. Colonel Sanders. Yeah. It's oh great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Colonel Sanders holding his great big cock. I see it. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Speaking of great big cocks, Heather, you had something you wanted to tell us about. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was that was a segue. Um, <laughs> I read an article this week that I was that fascinated me, and it's about a, an, a region in Italy that has very oddly specific food museums. So it's this whole region around Parma where um, prosciutto comes from. Prosciutto di Parma. Uh, well, it, that's one of them. That's on the first on my list of the, of the food museums that I found fascinating. The first one is the Museum of Parmigiano Reggiano. Mm. It's built into an 1848 circular farmhouse, and it's in the Parma region. And exhibits feature a shrine to the patron saint of cheese. (laughs) I was not aware there was a patron saint of cheese. And they also boast the world's largest collection of cheese graters. Mm Mm-hmm. Then there how many collections of cheese graters <laughs> right. can there even be? <laughs> Only four. That bar, that bar is not real. <laughs> then you can head over to the Museum of Traditional Balsamic Vinegar. Mm, fascinating. <laughs> mm-hmm, very fascinating. Like it features <laughs> it features a sculpture of a giant drop of vinegar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they also have a vinegar loft. That is sure. full of ancient barrels of vinegar. That's what I call including... my bedroom in high school. <laughs> God. 
including they have a barrel of vinegar that was once stolen from them by Napoleon <laughs> that was recovered. <laughs> they still have it. Where's the pedigree on that? Like, how can they prove that right? claim? <laughs> then they have a gift shop that sells balsamic ice cream. Ugh. Gross. Ew. Oh, thank you. Uh, there's also the Museum of the Tomato. <laughs> it, it apparently is mostly exhibits on tomato soup and, and canned tomato labels. And it also has an exhibit devoted to bolognese. How <laughs> large are these museums? Like, is it just one guy's apartment? Yeah. <laughs> Some of them seem like one of them is the, the the Parmesan Museum is a whole farmhouse. And you can get Parmesan in, as a snack at the end of that tour, by the way. That's cheesy. It's kind of like the Canadian t- yeah. Potato Museum we talked There's about. There's the Museum of Pasta. And this yeah, one, my favorite display here is a wall where it displays all 300 known pasta shapes. 300. I don't including think I could the name ones in, 10. Like craft makes like SpongeBob yeah. SquarePants yes. and yes. including the including the novelty <laughs> ones that you can get yeah. for bachelorette. Do parties. they have the elf ones that I really loved when I was a kid? I don't think so. There's a museum of marinated eel, a museum of salami. Mm-hmm. But then we come to my favorite, and I think this is the one that Dan was referring. To. What's that? Do you have a question, Dan? No. Can so you- many. <laughs> Can we back up and can you just say the Museum of Salami and then let me play a sound clip, please? You you got it. So there's also the Museum of Salami. What do you say we go back to my place and I'll show you my spicy, peppy pepperoni? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that, that happened. Yeah. That fits. <laughs> That's what Jess called this room in high school. I immediately thought of Grumpy Old Men. Yes. Yeah. This article. <laughs> <laughs> Taking a skin boat to Tuna Town. But here's the one that I think you guys will appreciate the most. It's called the Museum of Culatello, which I will uh, have you know, Culatello means little ass. <laughs> <laughs> and it is. A museum that is dedicated to the specific type of ham. Apparently, it's even more rare and better than prosciutto uh, because it is made specifically from the pork butt. And from Sir Mix a Lot Farm. The, the interesting <laughs> feature here. <laughs> The interesting feature here at this museum, which is also in Parma along the Po River. Is their ham dungeon? Mm. <laughs> also, what I just... call my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> the ham dungeon is below the museum, and below it, the belt. <laughs> it features over five thousand hams. <laughs> are they edible hams? They are edible hams. They're all down there curing because this specific mm. type of ham has to hang in a dungeon for three years before you can eat it. <laughs> I thought it was a room full of dads telling jokes. Okay. Yeah, makes more sense. Uh, the article I read said that the smell in the ham dungeon takes some getting used to, but that it's the most delicious ham you'll ever eat. Mm. <laughs> I could handle it. I've eaten at Golden Corral. <laughs> What's that fancy ham we had? The Spanish ham that we had? Iberico? Iberico, yeah. yes. Oh, yummy. Oh, that's so good. Iberico. This, so this I wonder if that has to hang in a ham dungeon. Yeah, that's what it says. Is that the kind that's hanging from the rafters in the restaurant and they just like slice it yep. off in front of you? Yep. yep. So this would make a great a great foodie tour for someone who, who wants to visit this region of Italy. So you can explore the ham dungeon. <laughs> you know, explore the ham the, dungeon the in detail. I love, I, but I might just go to one restaurant and order items from a menu rather than a whole yes museum of <laughs> cheese and especially the vinegar museum you got to take a tour to have dinner but the I mean, museum of like the tomato for dinner <laughs> i tried uh, to do that interestingly tour one time, but the vinegar one soured me on the whole thing <laughs> <laughs> 
Interestingly, it said that the best thing about all of these food museums is that they all either have on site or very near them uh, local restaurants that feature the foods and that are just uh, great places to to eat. But I I just appetizer. Yeah, <laughs> the the title of the article caught my eye because it mentioned the um, vinegar lofts and ham dungeons of Italy. And I, I was I was hooked. I had to know more. <laughs> so <laughs> if you would like to visit the Parma region and dip into the ham dungeon. <laughs> ham dungeon is my favorite Glenn Danzig song. Oh, let us know. <laughs> ham dungeon. Whoa. <laughs> Come and live in my ham dungeon. <laughs> oh boy. I want to take a... it to your vinegar loft. I'm going to roll this week. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to push the button and give Jess a chance to stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Japan is weird. <laughs> I totally skipped my universal news, but we'll go into Japan is weird. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll circle back. We'll come back. <laughs> um, Nobody knows the order but us. <laughs> right. uh, so today I'm going to uh, tell you guys about a special temple in Japan. Oh. This is uh, mm. a temple grand. A, a Buddhist temple called the uh, Jason Inn Temple. And this is sitting at the foot of Mount Koya. And so at, at, at first glance, it looks to just sort of be a textbook example of, of Japanese Buddhist architecture. Um, but as you get closer, um, you'll notice basically a whole abundance of boobs. Just, oh, this mm. is new for us. Yeah. Boobies. Yes. I'm branching it's out. Territory. <laughs> Not a penis in sight. <laughs> well, with that many boobs, can't be too but far. There's probably <laughs> some penises. <laughs> the uh, the temple grounds themselves are filled with thousands of depictions of female breasts. Um, huh. Yeah, so it's basically they're, they're decorations that are actually left by visitors as spiritual offerings. Um, they... <laughs> They, they oh. come in all shapes and sizes, naturally. Take me to church. Yeah. Um, this is this is my kind of religion. Um, <laughs> some are puffy, made with fabric and, and stuffed with what appears to be foam, I think. Um, and some have their nipples bedazzled with tiny beads, as, you know. Hmm. Reminds as me one does. Girlfriend in college, but. Um, <laughs> and then there's others that are just like blocks of wood topped with like circular dots. Then those are the people phoning it in. They're just like really not trying to evoke the breast, but you know, it's, it's up to the, to the, the patron as to what they leave. Um, and then there's just wooden plaques where people just painted boobs on them. So it gives you the whole like junior high bathroom vibe. Um, <laughs> if you're just into analog hooters, that's the way to go for you. Just draw it on a piece of wood, slap it up there. Um, it, it all began, though, it, it's kind of actually an interesting story. It began years ago when a doctor from a nearby city came to pray for a patient who was undergoing treatment for breast cancer. And so huh. the doctor asked the temple staff if he could place a symbol of female breasts as an offering. And after he did that, it, it became quite popular and word got around. And so people turned it into a whole place for uh, a site to pray for women's health issues. So oh, as, as silly as, nice. it, as it looks, it's kind of it's kind of cool. It's a good purpose. Yeah, I it's the that. only temple in Japan that has such a specialized form of offering, too, which is kind of cool. So usually is you there go to the, a gift shop selling boob shaped things. No, but I mean, like if, if maybe the, the monks are looking the other way, you can just sort of five finger discount it. If you know what I mean, but. <laughs> and, but but you actually can purchase breasts on site. You just have to leave them as as your offering. Oh, the whole I point see. Is, is to, oh, you, I see. At, at Buddhist temples, you can purchase you what you will leave then leave as your offering, and that sort of I see. Okay, way that's to make money as well. So interesting. If you're looking to get Wall your hands it. on uh, some offerings like that, <laughs> head on out to now we're talking titties. <laughs> While we're on the subject universe. of uh, Japanese cloth breasts, Jess, you promised Heather you would tell her about girlfriend pillows. <laughs> oh yeah, girlfriend yes, pillows. Yes, that's so, right. Oh, yeah. This is um. Uh, with the, <laughs> it's, <oof. laughs> like, how do I say this the right way? Uh, the, with the anime community in Japan, um, a lot of them are very lonely men, and uh, mm -hmm. who 
become very obsessed with the feet. characters that are are featured in these cartoons and somewhere along the lines it became very popular they are full body size pillows like those body pillows you get to kind of hug while you're sleeping mm-hmm, in bed sure, sure. the I have pillow one of those. case is completely printed with the picture of their favorite anime girl and ah, those are their girlfriends they have relationships with them it's sort of oh. like a really cheap real doll so you know you can just buy it and and treat it oh as my. your girlfriend and it, there's a whole community around it and does it have a relief valve oh no I, 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 I don't know <laughs> i i've not delved too far into that subculture because it's kind of sad <laughs> yeah <laughs> It's not as much fun as looking up the juggalos. I have you know. a pillow that's uh, screen printed with TV's Morgan Fairchild on it. <laughs> that's weird because I have a pillow with Morgan Freeman on it, and my wife is just yelling at me to get rid of it. But. Get busy sleeping or get busy hugging me. <laughs> oh, Japan. Japan. Yeah. Someday I'll visit you in all of your weirdness. I've and got so much to do when I get out there. Hopefully on Christmas so we can enjoy a barrel of chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Share your fried chicken with your pillow girl. Yes. <laughs> well, I just has some ideas for some other ways you can celebrate the holidays closer to home. Uh, yeah, a, a few more, uh, a little bit more wholesome options as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> Universal Orlando Resort uh, has announced a special Universal Holiday Tour that's going to be happening on select dates starting in November 22nd. So this is a pretty cool. It's a specially guided hmm. tour that's filled with exclusive access to their holiday experiences. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. So there's you get priority access to the Universal's holiday experience featuring Macy's Balloon. Because it's got to <laughs> be a sentence. <laughs> wow. I have ex-imagineers naming this stuff. <laughs> yes. Well, awesome. actually, I'm surprised, though, because you also get a tour of the Holiday Tribute Store. Whoever named that probably got fired for not using enough words. Not enough words. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, and you also get to meet uh, and greet the Grinch at Circus McGurkis Cafe Stupendous. Circus McGurkis. <laughs> yeah. I've never eaten there, but... It's- <laughs> No, because it's called Circus <laughs> yes. um, And you'll also get a show, a, an exclusive showing of the magic of Christmas at Hogwarts Castle, which, Ooh, I, yeah, which is cool because cool. I guess they're doing that just for people on this tour, which is pretty interesting. And oh, yeah. finally, a special themed gift during the tour to commemorate the experience, which they didn't. That say sounds that. fun. Probably like a keychain. But <laughs> um, and Magnets. pricing for that starts at fifty nine ninety nine plus tax. Oh, that's not bad at that all. That ain't bad. No. Reasonable, yes. Yeah. yeah, so I'm excited. I'm not going to be able to try that, but I can't wait to see like how it is. Because our own Milford booked it for mm-hmm. like in a week or two. I would Taking love to see the voyage, projections on Hogwarts Castle. I have yet to see any of that. Those projection shows. Uh, the the Hogwarts Castle. We saw the um. We saw them about a year ago. Not the Christmas mm-hmm. one, but I'm excited. The Dark that Arts one. Yeah, that one was really good. Yeah, oh. that one was really cool. I never saw it. And they are using the drones now, the light drones. To <gasps> I love those. Symbols, which Disney yeah. teased that years ago over Disney Springs at Christmas Over time. Disney Springs, yeah. We all expected that was going to be sort of integrated into the night shows, and they got put but back. They were sort of know. the first foray into that, and then we never saw them again. And I yeah. didn't see them again until uh, Joe Biden. Joe Biden. Biden. Yeah, you're yeah. seeing them all over the place now. Now so. they're like, oh, well, those Lady are Gaga so cool. Had them at the Super Bowl, too. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, they're cool. I love it. Yep. More drones. We'll stick around because after the commercial break, things get a little cutthroat when we draft our perfect Disney day. <laughs> what are when we doing, to Dan? Your next yeah. adventure. <laughs> you barely need to think key. is going to be like, That's choose your own adventure. Your key to the world mm. travel uh, okay. vacation plan. But but also also it's also like a draft. Limit. So when, when somebody the urge selects something, and it's off the table for it. Oh, okay. Travel is an authorized right. Disney I'll, vacation I'll explain plan. it. It's, it's easy and simple as long as you know what parks are around the, the world. As, as long as you've been to Walt Disney Alani World Florida campus. By Disney. Yes. I, I've been there. Walt well, Disneyland advisors, Florida campus. I've been there once or twice. Destination. And spa. And key to the world Good travel has a wealth of knowledge and passion. feel like telling people they're an asshole when they pick the thing that you wanted to do. Wherever your wanderlust is driving you. And should we bet? We're allowed to use the word asshole. agency. Yeah. <laughs> I might make a donkey go. sound to so put over it, but yeah. oh, I like it. We don't have limit on the computer system. I don't. Your first step should always be to visit www.keytothewor.com. 
theworldtravel.com for a no-obligation quote. Their expert travel planners are standing by to help you with every detail of your perfect vacation. That's www.keytotheworldtravel.com or at Key to the World Travel on Facebook. Key to the World Travel, your key to a magical vacation. Picture this. You've booked a trip to Walt Disney World, and before you can start enjoying your vacation, you join everyone else in a huge auditorium to plan your day. The dramatic fanfare swells up as you step to the podium and announce your first round pick for your Disney World 2021 vacation. And the crowd goes wild with either cheers or boos, depending on whether they also had cheeseburger egg rolls on their draft list. <laughs> Yummy. Wait, how are people planning trips these days? I missed the step with the auditorium in the announcements. Yeah. <laughs> Is that part of our services? Are we supposed World? to book a, an auditorium? Yeah. Uh, you, and an MC. You know, apparently, we're doing it draft style from now on. So okay, all right. To help, to help limit the number of guests at each attraction. Mm, that's, that's fair. We're doing. <laughs> that's what we're, we're doing today. We, uh, I, I wanted to see if you guys could put together the best possible day at Walt Disney World, but to make it a little fun, uh, it's going to be a little bit choose your own adventure and a little bit kind of like a like a sports draft. So, mm. um, sports ball. Yeah, so I'm going to I'm going to walk you through a day and and give you uh, choices that you have to make at each point in the day. And, I like it. And uh, once somebody picks an attraction or snack or whatever, that thing is off the list for the rest of the day. Nobody can go with. I call Oh, <laughs> dang <laughs> it! <laughs> so so then we, we we'll see who manages to put together the the best day with what's available. Oh, I know. I just really want to go whip right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so to select to, to figure out who the order for the draft. Um, oh, and we're also going to do this. Uh, we're going to do it like. Uh, we're going to reverse the order every other round. Mm, so if you okay. went first on the first round, you're going to go last on the next one. That way, it's it a little bit more even. So I'll, and I'll 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 walk you guys through. So it's easy. So to, to decide the order of the draft, um, I'm going to ask you a question, and we'll go in order of who's closest. How much was the most expensive room at the Contemporary per night when it opened in 1971? Oh, mm, in 1971 bucks. dollars. <laughs> $250. Like uh, Jeff. <gasps> Jeff was closest, but only because of uh only because of prices right rules there. We're we uh, talking with tax. Come on, I'm saying with tax. <laughs> Dude, even with tax. What was, with what tax, was it? Forty-four dollars oh. per night. What? Damn. For like the presidential suite or something? Yeah. That, uh, what? Have you, heard, have you heard of the uh, uh, the vacation kingdom package they offered then? No. Tell me more. It was like four nights stay at either the only hotel options were the poly or the contemporary, right? So yeah. it was four nights stay plus uh Plus a whole ton of the attraction tickets that mm -hmm. were good for any level of attraction. Right, yeah. And they had tickets for various, um, like the different things you could do at the resorts, like horseback riding, uh -huh. and yep. oh, renting yeah. a boat and all that stuff. It was like $68 for an adult. Oh, wow. man. For, for four nights, yeah. $44 yeah, a, a night, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I paid $68 for a chef mickey breakfast uh-huh uh yeah uh so that means um, gross i'm sorry <laughs> yeah it's not <laughs> good it. <laughs> uh jeff goes first jess goes second i'm uh, last and, uh, man uh I'll, I'll go ahead and i'll bet clean up all right just to make it interesting as it'll be a little bit more fun with four options here so uh for the first round uh we'll start off a little bit easy what resort are you guys waking up on the first day of your uh, of your Walt Disney World vacation? Jeff goes first. Hmm. Uh, contemporary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I was going to say that, but I'll say the poly then. I see. And now mm. everybody else is left with... Uh, the Enjoy dregs. your all star movies. <laughs> Although, I mean, there's some there's some awfully nice there's, new options. Yes, there are. Um, I was I'm going to say Riviera. I, I was uh, 
I'm thinking about Grand Destino Tower. That that would also be my my go to. But I'm going to go with Riviera because of its proximity to the Skyliner. I'm thinking long game because mm-hmm. there are hotels I like better, but there's no proximity I like better. Yeah, mm, that's that's fair. Oh, but I forgot about the Wilderness Lodge. Mm. Can I can I change my answer? Yes, I'm going Wilderness Lodge. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to look up the league rules. <laughs> <laughs> you might be sanctioned, but it's... <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and actually pick Destino because mm-hmm. it looks yeah. awfully awesome. That is an yeah. awesome choice. Nobody had a bad choice this time. No. Yeah. And, you know, as, like I said, we're going to start it off a little bit easy here. Um, I forgot <laughs> one rule to tell you. Uh-oh. So this is going to be a little bit of a magical trip to Walt Disney World. So from here on out... Um, I need you to imagine that every mode of transportation will get you to anywhere you need to go on property. Nice. That um, basically travel time is not an issue. Okay. That park hopping is open. Well, then I have made the best choice. <laughs> right. So, so we're good to go from there on out. Um, okay. So next round, and I'll start this one out. What transportation uh, are you going to take for the entirety of your day. <laughs> so uh, this means I get to go first this time. No, oh, you get to go first. Dang, I forgot you about Dan. Oh, and I think I'm going to, I, I don't think you're going to be too upset. Uh, I think you'll still get your choice. I'm going to take uh, the launch that goes from, that leaves the Polynesian. Those That smaller size. Those little smaller, tiny boats. Yeah. 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 Not, not the nighttime one for the big crowds, the small launch. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm I'm going with the Skyliner. I'm oh, taking the Skyliner everywhere. <laughs> How great would that be? Yes, I would love it. It's my favorite. Uh, Jess, where you go? What do you take? So, so can we choose something that doesn't technically exist anymore, like the minivans? Ooh, oh, minivan yeah. count? Uh, if it's a fantasy, mm, it is yeah, a fantasy. Right. It, it is a fantasy. Not, I, I was gonna, I was gonna go, you know, monorail stink, stinky express, but uh, no. <laughs> if, <laughs> the petting zoo. Option. Like, if we're talking anything, I'm gonna resurrect the minivans. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. That's fair. So much. Uh, Sounds like too. a fair game. Yeah. Surely yeah. that'll come back, right? They were still selling the toys. I was so sad when I saw them in the store last week. I know. Were they 50% off? <laughs> then I'll go monorail. Off? That's what I wanted anywho. All right. Mon- perfect. Monorail. monorail. Okay. Um, for the next stop, we need to know which park you're going to be starting out your day in. Oh. Uh, Magic Kingdom. Goes first. Yeah. Jeff MK. Uh, Jess? I'm going to go Epcot. You picked Epcot? I did pick Epcot, yeah. Because wow. it's actually the most quiet time to be at that park. First mm, of the day, that's that's so. fair. That's fair. I can get the few things Ooh. there are to do there done and get out. Now you've put me in a conundrum. And I'll be interested to see your answer to the next question. Heather, Where? which park are you starting uh, So I'm left with Animal Kingdom or Hollywood Studios. No. You know where to start. Yeah. One of, well, they're both half day parks. So really they're both matter. half day parks. So, yeah. You're going to get a chance to park hop later. It's cooler. It actually doesn't really matter. In the morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going to have to go with Animal Kingdom. Ooh. Yeah. Animal Kingdom. That means I get a chance to finally get on a boarding group. For, uh, yeah. Oh, well, if you're lucky. <laughs> Rise of the resistance. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Hollywood Studios. Okay. So, uh, the next one is this is the only time that I'm going to ask you to stay ge- geographically accurate at the park that you just chose. What attraction are you going to rope drop? Mm. Uh, and you, I'll start uh, you go Hollywood first. Studios. That means uh, I'll just go ahead and say I'm going to go with Rise mm-hmm. of the Resistance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you can't. Mm-hmm. Flight of well, Passage. If I get really lucky, Heather, yeah, Flight of Passage. Mm-hmm. You know, stuck with my. <laughs> Now you're at Epcot. What are you going to do? Right. I'm going to rope drop what I always rope drop. Living with the land. Boom. Yeah. 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 So that's what I was hoping for. I want to see that little girl that's so annoyed with those tomatoes. <laughs> she is. That so girl was my favorite part of that about ride. About those tomatoes. At the end of Living with the Land, look on the screens for the girl that she eats is, tomatoes. She 
she has been given a basket of tomatoes and she's pissed. She's like, well, she's been hanging out with us tomatoes for how many years now? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, needs an update. Those are so, 80s tomatoes. Best park. Where are you going first, Jeffrey? Seven dwarfs. Mm-hmm. Seven D's. That's, a, that's an easy answer. If you do answer. have to wait, that's a good time of day to- do we have mm-hmm. super passes? Are we walking on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're, 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 we've got, you've got magical. Uh, oh, okay. Flight, yeah. I'll go. Yeah. I'll go. Passes. Start right there. I'll go right through the castle. Right, right in. through. Seven dorks mind train. Well, so next up, uh, it's, it's time to grab a nice little mid morning snack. Mm. Uh, this needs to be something that would be like a snack credit and preferably from like an actual snack stand. We're not, we're not going into any restaurants. What, you know, what does it have to be in the park that we're in? <laughs> no, from now on, okay. from, from here on, go ahead oh. wherever you want to go mm. on property. Imagine that it's all one giant park. Ooh. Can I drink booze? Is it a snack? For my snack? Yeah. Yeah. I guess oh, if snack you snack, I, no, you can't get <laughs> Yeah. Fiddle dee dee. We're going to cover booze later. Fiddle sticks. I'm going Dole Whip. Mm, mm-hmm. No, float? Dole Whip float. Thank yeah. you. Don't, there, there don't no give the whip. incorrect answer. Yeah, yes. Why waste your time? Thank you. If we're talking <laughs> morning snack things, I'm going to go with the uh, Cheshire Cat tail. Mm, mm. Mm. Those are good. That Those are really good. good one. Although... We got one last time and it was dry and terrible. Ooh. Oh They've no! Because the uh, that little stand isn't open right now. They're moved over to, uh, I think, Cosmic Rays or something mm. like that. But they are selling them. So. Well, no one has claimed it, so I'm getting a cheeseburger spring roll. <laughs> there you go. Mm. Mm-hmm. I've never mm-hmm. tried that yet. Oh, Have you had one? Yes, yeah. it's so good. I could do without the pickle in them, but one. they're pretty good. Oh, I like pickle. I love a pickle. <laughs> Yeah, she yeah. Give me the especially, pickle. Especially down in the ham dungeon. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Put your pickle in my ham dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> dungeon. Uh, well, I'm going to have to go with uh, Jeff's choice. The the the, uh, the nemesis of Jeff's choice, and uh, I have to my all time favorite, the citrus swirl. Mm-hmm. I had a feeling you were going to say that. Do they do citrus swirl float? Yeah. Ooh, I bet you could. Yeah, but, yes. Oh, yeah, they, they do, and it's in that gross, like orange fan. Yeah, that's why oh. I don't like that one. Yeah, Ew. they would put citrus swirl in pineapple juice, yes. in orange and pineapple. Mm. That would be good. And some pogs. Yums. <gasps> Ooh, Ooh pog. and pog. Shut up. I'm making that. Do it. Um, okay, next up, uh, you got to get on another ride. What what attraction are you heading to next? And we can go wherever we want now. Wherever you want, but keep in mind that seven dwarves living with the land, <laughs> living with the land is gone. Damn, are all off the table <laughs> for the rest of the day. Oh, for the uh, rest of the day. Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Oh, dang it! Hey, was it your turn? Yeah, it was it's your turn. turn. You went. It was yeah. Dan's turn. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll turn. you can take yeah. it. Uh, but that's fine because um, I was going to go with the Jungle Cruise. Mm. That's a solid. Okay. Um, seen a lot of great Jungle Cruise T-shirt designs lately. I am. If you answer uh, what, yeah. what I think you might answer, you know you're dead to me. So don't do it. <laughs> now I'm scared. <laughs> I was gonna say you know Jess's Expedition Everest. <laughs> okay, we're good. Yeah, I know it is favorite attraction. Uh, no, I would go Everest next. Yeah, <laughs> you're dead. You're dead, you dead to me. <laughs> That's yeah, no, I, I I love the, I love that one, but not I, and I love it almost as much as you, but it not as much. It's your turn now. So so tell us where you're going. Well, <clears throat> excuse me, since you didn't pick it, then uh, you guys oh, know what I'm going to say. Lightning McQueen's <laughs> Racing Academy. <laughs> said no, no one, one ever. ever. <laughs> I, I, in fact, actually, like we walked past that and I pointed it out to my son and he's like, what's that? And I was like, uh, it's a new like show with Lightning McQueen. And I couldn't finish the sentence. He's like, nope, let's go. Yeah, we're not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> but you could move in pops. So obviously Haunted Mansion. Yeah, Haunted definitely. Mansion. Yes. I don't care for that ride. <laughs> and you are dead to me. <laughs> and I will never speak to you again. Okay, Jeff, I think you still get to pick your. Uh... Uh, I would have to go with the American experience. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, let's see. After conservation, Wait, big thunder. Yeah, with big yeah. thunder. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's a good. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Uh, yeah, that uh, that means we're uh, we're coming up. It's it's apparently this is during the pre-COVID times because it's already been a long day and we're coming up on lunchtime. Mm, so mm-hmm, which, mm-hmm. which quick serve restaurant are you going to? Oh, eat quick time? serve. Mm. Yeah. Ooh. Hmm. Oh, uh, Flame Tree Barbecue. Oh, good one, good one. I'm gonna stick along those lines because I ate there for the third time on this past trip and loved it. Regal Eagle. Oh, oh dang, so Regal Eagle! Yeah, have, it has been consistently have, good. about that place. Rap. I've only been there once, and it was so so good. It's every single time I've gone, it's been amazingly good, and the service is great. Like it's one of my favorite mm. places, and it's affordable. For the portions are giant. Yeah, you get like a half chicken for, and it's smoked meats <laughs> for only thirty eight. And who doesn't <laughs> love smoked meats? It's true, mm. and they have like different types of barbecue good sauce. Choice, yes. Yeah, so good. Well, let's see. Uh, wh- what is it called? Is it Sunset Ranch? The the little outdoor quick service in Hollywood Studios near the Tower of Terror where you yeah. can get a hot dog covered with mac and cheese. You cannot anymore. What? Well, this is fantasy Walt Disney World, no, so I true. want the hot dog with yeah, the, the mac and cheese and the mac pulled and pork. cheese and bacon hot dog. Oh, yes. Oh. I think it's called the Sunset Ranch Market right there. Yeah. I know there's, there's something like, like a that. Windows that have different weird names. Mm-hmm. And, and there's produce. one that's, that sells ice cream and one that's hot dogs. And yeah, mm-hmm. I could not get Turkey my eggs over there. Now. I could not Turkey get my peanut legs. butter and jelly milkshake. I tried to stop. <gasps> by and I was like, I know the tune in lounge isn't open. No. I asked the, the lady at the front and I was like, is there any way I can get that without a reservation? She's like, no, she's like, but they are serving milkshakes over at that ice cream place over near tower of terror. And she's like, I don't know what they're serving. I was like, it's not that. And I don't want it. So <laughs> Not happening. <laughs> Peace out. Telling Walt on you. <laughs> That's interesting because I noticed uh, last week that a lot of the a lot of the sit down restaurants were doing takeout. Like you could order. Yeah, I didn't uh, take out from quite a few of them. Yeah, it was hard to find. The app was not showing me all of that every time. I was having mm. a lot of app issues this past week. So. Weird. That's unusual. Well, yeah. you know, right? <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Dan? Where are you eating lunch? Um, I'm torn because I was going to go with either flame tree or regal eagle. <laughs> sounds so good. Um, I think I'm going to go with Satuli Canteen actually. Ooh, you can get those cheeseburger pods. I still haven't eaten yeah. there. It's delicious. They're really They're good. Really if you like the cheeseburger them. spring rolls, try Satuli Canteen and try the cheeseburger pods. I like that. It's like buttons, a usually, quarter. So. Yeah. yeah. And it's like. Somehow they've captured the essence of a quarter pounder with cheese in a bao yeah. bun. It's so good. But put it in. It's not even a bao no. bun. It's like a dumpling. Yeah, like a... they're really good. They're only on the kids menu now, though, which is a little bit infuriating. But yeah, I was going to say, if you wanted real adult food, the adult food is really good. It is also good. But, you know, some of it has yeah. got quinoa in it. So adult food. <laughs> I don't want a quinoa hey, what's bowl. The, um, what's the... Asian restaurant where there's a quick service oh, version and a sit yak, down. Yak and Yeti. Yeti. Yeah, I've never eaten at that either. Yak and uh, Yeti, the sit down is awesome. The sit down is good and their their takeout Chinese is delicious. The I'm little trying, window. Yeah. I forgot about that one. That was a good one, Jeff. Their ribs are really good. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Should try that. Well, after that lunch, we need to uh we need to let your digestion work a little bit. So, uh, which restroom are we going? To? <laughs> yeah, where are you going to the bathroom? <laughs> oh man! <Yeah. laughs> um, um, which which show are you going to sit down to give your give yourself a little break? Ooh. And I am going to go. Can I go to Disneyland? <laughs> yeah. Are we talking any uh, theater attraction or just the ones with live entertainment? Oh, any theater uh, attraction, so it can be the, animatronic. Is it my live. turn? Do I go first? It's no, I dance go first. first. You, you go first. first. Damn it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with the Country Bears. <laughs> ah, and now you're going that to be what I wanted. hunted <laughs> down and killed. <laughs> <laughs> um, ooh, Country Bears is such a such a good one. Um, I'll go with the Indiana Jones stunt show. 
Mm. That's a solid. That would be mm-hmm, a nice mm-hmm. choice. Yeah. I just hope this trip isn't happening in July. <laughs> because I'm going to be sitting in with the Muppets in the air. Yes. Nice. That's a good one. Good one, Jess. I'm going uh, great, big, beautiful tomorrow. Carousel mm-hmm. of progress. Solid Excellent. answer. Yes. Excellent choice as well. Does that count? That's a show. That's right? a show. Yeah. yeah. A you're show. sitting down. You're digesting your food. You're sleeping. <laughs> yes. You're hearing little children. Yeah. Mommy, when is this, this over? Ellen's, Ellen's I hate they closed yeah. Ellen's universe of energy. It's the best air conditioned 45 minute nap. I've the only nap. attraction I have ever slept on. I <laughs> fell asleep on that ride. Uh, well, now it's, t- now it's time to wake up for a little more excitement. What What's your third attraction of the day going to be? Ooh, no, no, Jeff, it's you're up. What's oh, what's left? Then I, for some excitement, I want to ride uh, Expedition Everest. I already it's said already that one. Taken. Oh, Boom. well, there's nothing exciting left at Disney World. Yes, there is. It's it's <laughs> it's there's Space Mountain, darn it. Oh yeah. Oh, all right. You know, Space Ranger spin or uh, no I'm rock and roller forward, coaster. Oh yes, that one. There's, there there you go. Um, I'm gonna go Runaway Railway because I'm. <gasps> Mickey the Mouse, he's my favorite. Seeing my son's reaction to that ride too just made me love it even more. Uh, he's I such a huge fan ride. of those cartoons, and yeah. I didn't tell him anything about it, but he and he's still a kid, so mm-hmm. it's delightful. He's at that age I, where he just buys everything, but yeah, it's yeah. wonderful. I just took my my sister, who is 36 years old, on it for the first time, and her reaction the first time we were on that ride was it was just like it. A kid, she was so excited when it almost shit her pants. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> told me, told that you, that. <laughs> when they almost, when her ears almost blew off in the tornado room, and then we got to the dance room, and uh, I think she thought about her daughter Presley, who loves to dance, and I think she teared up a little bit. It was, it was great. That's a good one. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the Tower of Terror. Nice. Ooh. Which I also, uh, the, speaking of Kendra, she's been terrified of that ride her entire life. And Had we. she ridden it when she was a kid? No, she wouldn't get I on never it. Never so rode it. it. About elevators. She's got she's... this weird fear of elevators. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's not the right of weirder yeah. fears, but. <laughs> right, yeah, well, mm. well, um, I mean, she doesn't. She does not do elevators. She doesn't do elevators, and we convinced her to do it. And I, I texted Dan. It's like it's happening. It's happening. <laughs> and she, she, she went through with it. I think she wanted to die in the line. <laughs> she wanted she, to bolt. <laughs> she forgot that it moves on. The car moves on a track, uh, unlike at. Uh, guardians where it only goes up and down so when it started moving forward she said she freaked out she, thought she it was did broken. i knew she had been on guardians so i kept saying just it's just like guardians no big deal it's just like guardians you're gonna be fine and then we sat down in it and i realized that's when the light bulb went i'm like oh no Wait, I, she's been on guardians she has been on guardians yeah and she only went on that because our son who was five at the time uh, shamed her into going with yes. her and promised to hold her hand the whole time so that she wouldn't be scared. Oh, well, if you've been on that, I don't know what's the big deal yeah. with the other. Because that one doesn't, I mean, you can sort of get out of, you can think of it as not a broken elevator, I guess. You can, uh, you know, you can yeah. convince yourself that it's a space ride. And that's what she did, although she almost broke Wyatt's hand, from what I understand. <laughs> Squeezing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it started to move and I didn't want to look her in the eye because I was afraid she was going to kill me for not uh, warning her. But she did great. And that 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 is fine. And I have I was scared of that ride my whole life, too. I it was only a couple of years ago that I started riding it. So what's your wake up ride? Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Splash Mountain. Oh, good mm. one. Yeah. <laughs> I hope to ride that later in the day. <laughs> Well, no bad news. Off the table. The lines were awfully long, <laughs> and it's time for us to pick a table service restaurant for dinner. Oh. Ooh. Who's... Dan goes first. Does Dan oh, goes first. first? You go um, first. No, I go first. The guy that made the rules can't remember them. <laughs> <laughs> I just got distracted thinking about... It's just what like every other commissioner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this could be... This could, <laughs> Uh, this could be at the at a park or at a uh, at a resort hotel or Disney Springs. 
Sure, why not? Yes. Let's get crazy. Or Disney mm-hmm. California Adventure. <laughs> no, we're not getting that crazy. <laughs> we don't have a TARDIS available. I'm going to go, actually go with... Um, I really, really, really like Skipper Canteen, especially if I can get in one of the fancier rooms. Not mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. The food is awesome. It Service is, good. is always mm. good. Yeah. Mm. I turn. miss when they had the really over the top Skipper joke kind of thing going on, and yeah. they were a little bit yes. rude. And I do love that. It. Had to stop. But. Ugh. <laughs> People. They suck. People yeah. are the worst. People are the worst. <laughs> They ruin it. Hmm. What are you going to eat, Heather? Oh, so, so many good restaurants. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah. I could choose to say this one and, and have Jeff never speak to me again, <laughs> or I'll go California Grill. <laughs> That's a good one. That was my backup it's... if you didn't say what I want. Yeah. Yep. Well, I don't know what you want, but I'm going to Tiffin's and getting the shrimp and grits. <laughs> Mmm, yummy, yummy. That is excellent, too. And I will be over at Marmo ah, I knew that's what you were going to say. Mmm, <laughs> eating those ribs. Eating the everything oh. they sell there. That place is so good. I it love just like all Asian their food. food. so just good. all of it. <laughs> <laughs> just not much of it. Just because I don't like sushi. You can get what my, my picky eater gets and get the um, honey chicken. I like chicken. I like noodles. Mm-hmm. I like chicken. their ribs. Are mm, they have ribs. good noodle. I mean, oh, their ribs are the best. Ribs no, I haven't eaten there. Uh, they cook them like normal and baste uh, them in that that Asian like the Korean barbecue style like, sauce, like and then they flash fry them real quick so they get like crispy and oh my goodness, they are yeah, like possibly food. the greatest thing I've ever eaten. They're so good. Mm-hmm. That sounds so good. And then and when dinner's over again, yeah, now that dinner's over, um, it's time to, well, we're winding down our day at the parks. Next up, it's time to pick what nighttime spectacular are you going to cap off the, uh, the parks with hmm. the sit in your hotel? Cause everything's closed. <laughs> current That's okay. We're going back to- and, <laughs> and I'm going to, I'm going to put, I'm going to give you even this extra rule is, uh, this is not seasonally dependent, so you can pick any seasonal variation on a show. Anything that's ever been at Walt Disney World in all of time. Yeah. Okay. As long as it's a nighttime spectacular. As long as it is a nighttime spectacular. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Jeff is up first. Oh. Um, then I will go with whatever the current most recent thing is at Magic Kingdom that I happily ever about. after. There it is. Once upon a happily That's ever time. Over that is a good one. That's very good. Yeah. It is, yeah. I'm gonna. It, it's it's funny because I'm not a parade person, but I really love the Boo to You parade. So mm, mainly just mm-hmm. for the whole haunted mansion section with the great yeah, diggers and the dancers. Great great diggers. It's perfect. So I'll I'll pick yep. that. I love that. That's a good one. I am going with. Jingle bell, jingle bam. Jingle bam. Ooh, I, lo- I love that show too. <laughs> yeah. I love that one. Those specials are really great. We just watched those again the other day. They're all on Disney Plus now. Yeah, oh, they're so good. And we at what? It was a. I've never seen one. I just love the show anyway. Prep and Landing. And of, prep and Landing too. They're really yeah. Cool. What event was it that we were at, Jeff, where we got to hear from the guy who designed Jingle Bell, that Jingle Bam? That was at the D23 uh, yeah. Destination D. It's Jingle Bam. He and was they, so... We, had, uh, we all did the dessert party. The people that went to D23 yes. did the dessert party exit. And he just made me love it even more because he was so excited about it. And he talked, he walked through the design of the show. And then when he was, when he got to the fireworks part, he's just like, I just told him, go find whatever we have left over and shoot it shoot all it off. All off. Yeah. <laughs> he, they literally, so they had seasonally things. It. So they were like, shoot everything. It just everything. And then, it, I don't know, it made the show that sort of come alive even more. For, and every time like, he yeah, said the name, he would say, enough. what about lasers? Yes. <laughs> He's just yes. throwing everything at it. And every time he would say the name of the show, it was Jingle Bell, Jingle Bam. <laughs> it just, it's so good. Sure. Yeah. What are you stuck with, Dan? <laughs> yeah, what's well, left at night? There's actually a lot. Because... Honestly, part of me wants to say the electrical. 
<laughs> pageant. That part of you I doesn't like fun. <laughs> sitting, <laughs> sitting, <laughs> no, sitting on the Polynesian beach with a Dole Whip from the pineapple. I could see I, you loving that. I really that. can. I do love that. <laughs> yeah. I love it a lot. I also was thinking about the uh the star wars oh yeah laser projector mm-hmm. spectacular that's also a good one space battle and that's lasers that's <laughs> uh but i think the the halloween magic kingdom fireworks hollow wishes yeah. oh yeah hollow wishes they I are pretty I spectacular hollow so, wishes was the first time i experienced their like full surround 360. you 360 fireworks yeah love that that show's pretty amazing. Um, so, our last one before we head back to our resorts for to go to bed is: uh, What bar are you headed to? For oh, <laughs> and oh. I get to go first. <sighs> oh my! This is this is the hardest one. <laughs> this is so hard. I this love is all like the choosing bars. Choosing a child, Why? it really is. Uh, and I'm going to go with. Uh, Trader Sam's Grog Grotto. Mm-hmm. Specifically, guys, yeah. inside, I don't mind the community table. I like that the atmosphere inside. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. definitely. I never get, I've only been inside that place to drink one time. Yeah, me too. I've always been on the stupid patio. Yeah. Yeah, getting eaten alive by the mosquitoes out there. Mosquitoes. It's much nicer <sighs> on the patio me. at the Enchanted Tiki Bar at Disneyland. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I will go with, um, oh, there's so many good ones. I'll go with Enchanted Rose at oh, the Grand that's Floridian. That's lovely. Mm-hmm. It's very pretty. My wife liked it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to go with Jock Lindsay's. Oh, <laughs> Hangar Bar. Yeah. Enchanted Tiki Bar Part Two, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Sorry, Jeff. You can come cool join headed me monkey. plus one. Oh. <laughs> There's still some really, really good ones left, though. That's true. I can't think of any. Think of if you were at the resort that Dan is staying at. I don't remember where Dan He's is He's at staying. the Grand Destino Tower. Oh. There's some good yes. options there. It is a nice bar. What's the one, the, the downstairs one there at the Destino Barcelona. Tower? <laughs> that one has the build it's your own G and T. It just has great, great gin selection, and it's, it's so pretty, pretty too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's just not fun. Jock Lindsay's to me. Is yeah, fun. happy fun. Three times. bridges at, at Grand Destino at, at Coronado is great too. Yeah, I was. I almost went with the Edison. I really like that. Ooh. Oh, can we go back in time? Could I be at the Adventurers Club? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Sure. That's... Why? Well, yeah. Hey, we said yeah, no. We so. said yeah. n- no. Yeah, and... you're taking a boat to Epcot. <laughs> yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Just put one capacitor in that damn thing. Yeah. Go, Jeff. Jeff can. No, go I'm taking the, the Skyliner club. from the from the uh, Animal <laughs> Kingdom over to the Magic Kingdom. So. <laughs> <laughs> I never got to try the Adventurers Club, and I Kongaloosh. I did when I was a kid, and I, I was too young to appreciate it. But I, I thought it was pretty cool, and wished mm-hmm. I would ha- was able to actually drink there. Mm-hmm. Understand half of the jokes. Yeah, I think well I would do any time. one of these four days. Yeah, let's recap yeah. real quick. So we'll start with Jeff. Jeff is going to stay at the Contemporary Resort, and he is going to travel via monorail for the duration of his trip. He's going to start his day at the Magic Kingdom, where he's rope dropping uh, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. Uh, for a morning snack, he's going to go with a Dole Whip float, the only mm. option. Mm, yummy. Yes. Uh, and then he's going to take a short walk over to Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Um, he's going to have lunch at Flame Tree Barbecue, uh, <laughs> and then uh, let his digestion settle with a nice spin on the Carousel of Progress. Uh, to, uh, for a little afternoon wake me up, he's going to ride on Rock and Roller Coaster, uh, then head over to Disney Springs for dinner at Morimoto Asia. Mm. Uh, He'll enjoy the uh, firework, the happily ever after nighttime spectacular before winding down the day at the Adventurers Club. Nice. Pretty good. I, yeah, yeah that, I, that I'd do that. That's pretty solid. That's pretty good. Yeah. Or at the Barcelona Lounge. Barcelona. Nah, we'll go with Adventurers Club. It's fine. 
it's your perfect day. So yeah, let's keep yeah. it away. Uh, Jess is going to wake up at the poly and mm-hmm. uh, he's going to call down to get a minivan to take him over to Epcot <laughs> where he is rope dropping the only option uh, <laughs> living with the land. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> for a morning for a morning snack, he's gonna get his donut on with a Cheshire cat tail uh at Magic Kingdom before riding the Haunted Mansion. Uh he's gonna grab some barbecue for lunch at the Regal Eagle in Epcot. I love and, that. And and then uh chill out for a while at Muppet Vision 3D. And then he's gonna head on over to Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway before hopping over to Animal Kingdom for dinner at Tiffin's. Mm. Charred enjoy. octopus. <laughs> mm. uh, he's going to enjoy the Boo to You parade before uh, ending the night at Jack Lindsay's hangar bar. A little cool-headed monkey. Mm. Oh, that sounds Yum. like something I'm going to do next e. time I go down. Yeah, can I'm we like get it? I'm writing this down. I'm like, actually, yeah, that's, I'm going to January. I'm doing this. <laughs> this is what's happening. <laughs> that's a I guess it's doable. <laughs> I might have to break it up a bit, but yeah. You know. Depends on who you're with. At least I'm going to check the boxes. How about that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There you go. Uh, Heather is going to wake up at the Wilderness Lodge and uh, jump on the Skyliner to take her <laughs> yep. to Animal Kingdom. Uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> perfect world where she's going to rope drop a flight of passage. Uh, she's going to uh, snack on a cheeseburger spring roll before going all the way back to Animal Kingdom to ride <laughs> yes. all the way uh, for expedition. Expedition. <laughs> Hey, if I can hop on the Skyliner to do it. <laughs> yeah, it's worth the trip. Uh, head back f- to ride on uh, Expedition Everest. Um, she's going to grab a fancy hot dog from Sunset Ranch in Hollywood Studios. Uh, she's the busiest before... traveling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I am. <laughs> <laughs> then I uh, head over to watch the Indiana Jones stunt spectacular. Uh, actually, her, her afternoon's not too yeah. bad. She's hanging out in Hollywood Studios because she's going to go back over to Tower of Terror. Uh, and then for dinner uh, at California Grill. Um Enjoy the Christmas offering of Jingle Bells, Jingle Bam. Yes. <laughs> and then finish off the night with a some sort of fancy drink at the Enchanted Rose Lounge. Mm. Uh, it's a lovely day. It is. That sound very nice. A lovely day. Lovely day. Um. Oh, and then me. That's 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 right. Now okay. it's your turn. Cool. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I, I'm going to spend the night at uh, the Destino Tower. Sorry, Grand Destino. Grand Tower. Destino. Yes. It's the Despacito just, Tower. It's grand. <laughs> yes, Jeff calls it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to use one of those uh, little launch boats to get around the resort property. <laughs> I'll start my day at Hollywood Studios where I rope drop uh, Rise of the Resistance, uh, snack on a citrus swirl before heading over to uh, across the walkway to the Jungle Cruise. I'll have lunch at Satouli Canteen mm. and chill out for a little while at the Country Bear Jamboree. Nice. Uh, after, after that, I'm going to hop on Splash Mountain uh, and... Yeah, I'm staying in Magic Kingdom for the afternoon where I go to uh, Skipper Canteen for dinner and probably get some of those lamb shanks because... Oh, mm, lamb shank. Those are delicious. Shank. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't um, love a nice shank? Yeah. Most inmates. I'm opening a new restaurant, Shanks for the Memories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes. Uh, um, wishes will be my mm, mm-hmm. spectacular, and then I'll finish off the night at Trader Sam's Grog Grotto. Nice. Mm. Probably have a shrunken zombie head because that's yum, nice. yum, because it's I'm good. I'm a hippopotamite it... fan. Ooh, yeah, uh, that's yeah. Good too, but I like the I like the souvenir glass that yeah. I had to drink out of. I like the tiki 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 rum. <laughs> It doesn't That's come good. in a cool glass, though. Yeah. So I've done all, that. It sounds like everybody pretty much picked a pretty darn good. Day. Yeah, I wouldn't say no to any of them. No, absolutely. Shank you for being a friend. <laughs> Is that a better name for my new restaurant? Yes. Shanks for the memories. I still like that. I like shank you for being a friend. Then you can have a theme song. <laughs> 
Well, thanks for hanging out with us again this week. <laughs> If you're excited to start planning your perfect Disney day or explore anywhere else around the world, Key to the World Travel has a 220 acre multi sports complex featuring training facilities and playing fields for baseball, softball, basketball, soccer, tennis, track and field, volleyball, roller hockey, and dance and cheer competitions. Full of expert travel planners ready to make your vacation dreams a reality. Head to www.keytotheworldtravel.com to get started with the no obligation quote. Don't forget to catch up with our friend, the theme park professor, for all the latest theme park news and tips at www.themeparkprofessor.com. Word of mouth is always the best way to help us grow our show. If you've got a friend or two who you think would appreciate our special brand of globe trotting jackassery, tell them what makes our show so great and send them our way. You can find links to subscribe to the show on your favorite apps and updates on all of our favorite ham dungeons at <laughs> www.goldtreeadventures.com. We can't wait to hang out with you again next week. We'll see you real soon. Bye. Bye, everybody. Unfortunately, Flo's has been taken out of the draft pool for a career in the <laughs> injury of bad food. <laughs> yes. To ask a question or share your travel story, you can reach us by smoke signal, carrier pigeon, or send an email to goldkeyadventurers at gmail.com. And make sure you follow the Gold Key Adventure Society on Facebook and Instagram. A huge thanks to our sponsor, Key to the World Travel. For all your travel planning needs, visit www.keytotheworldtravel.com for a free quote and help planning the trip of a lifetime. Tell them the Gold Key Adventurers sent you. That's www.keytotheworldtravel.com. Key to the World Travel, your key to a magical vacation. Thanks to Outer Vibe for the use of their song Hoka Hey for the intro and outro of our show. Find them on Facebook at The Outer Vibe or check out www.outervibe.com for tour dates, music, merch, and more. We'll see you next week for another meeting of the Gold Key Adventure Society. And until then, remember life is short and the world is wide. So go have an adventure. Was it from me talking about my hand dum- ham dungeon? <laughs> Is that why? Actually, that was that was less dirty than I expected it to be. I expected it to get a lot more Dueling What dueling dancing. Dueling dancing. This could be a new a whole new podcast. It's been a while since we've had a good celebrity guest on too. <laughs> That's true.